Hello, Dan Dustin here. Welcome, finally, to From Tree to Beam Plus 40 Years. I, I expect you have seen my video uh, titled From Tree to Beam, and I am the same fellow. And uh, this is, uh, my name is Dan Dustin, and you're probably on my uh, YouTube channel, which you find under my name. And this is my uh, website where I sell wooden spoons and how you can communicate with me if you, if you wish. And I have received uh, quite a number of questions from uh, viewers of this, uh, of this uh, video. And uh, so I'm coming back to answer them as best I can. Uh, I don't know how well that will be, so let's find out. I've decided to do this uh, by the means known as show and tell. So uh, let me just start, start in with show and tell. Uh, these, are, these are my sharp rod axes. Uh, I've always found that a piece of garden hose is the best way to protect them, tied with uh, bed sheeting or ribbon or something, and that's what this is all about. And you'll see that this is a welded axe, that uh, the weld is here and more or less flat on one side. There's the flat side, and here is the bevel side. And it's quite common for there to be a break uh, where the, the iron thins, where it was hammer welded against the steel. Uh, this is the only type of axe I care to use. Uh, iron, iron is soft. I think of iron like this kind of a super rubber. It falls dead. It doesn't ring dingity. Doesn't doesn't go bling bling every time you hit hardwood with it, and it not, doesn't feel so dangerous. It's, it it uh, feels safer. Uh, the iron axes are made butterfly style, that is to say, there's two, the, they're open on both sides and they're folded up uh, against the, the steel edge and welded to that steel edge. You can see the welds. Uh, an interesting thing about this axe, it does have a, does have a bent handle, obviously, and uh, an interesting thing about this axe is the handle is designed to go in from either end. I can take the handle, there's, there's a wedge, right? You can probably do it by hand, not quite. But there's a wedge here I can knock out easily and put the handle right into the other end and turn it over. And the assumption is this is for left-handed and right-handed hewing, but I don't know that. Uh, with any given head, there is, there are, I, I assume, four ways to hew. Uh, two ways with the handle in one end and two ways in the handle in the other end. And, and what, I, what I suggest is uh, that you try your, try your axe uh, all four ways and see how you like it. Uh, this axe weighs out at eight and a half pounds total. Uh, and uh, I've never thought about the weight of an axe. So this is on learning here along with you. Uh, because I've just uh, hewn with what I found that other people hewed with, and, and uh, you know my problem has always been grinding. I grind on an old-fashioned grindstone, which you can see if you'll take a look at my YouTube uh, uh, presentation titled Introduction. And it takes me a season to grind to grind an axe. It's just you grind every day for a while and. And after a month or so, or a few months, why, you've got it. So the handle uh, is uh, almost 14 and a half to 15 inches uh, from, the, from, from the head down. And uh, I consider this a good length of handle. Uh, my guess is I'm a short handle user because there certainly are longer handles. But one question I'm being asked uh, fairly often is how heavy should my head be? and how long should the handle be? So here's a good hewing axe, and it's, uh, as I say, eight and a half pounds and a, and a, and a 14 inch uh, or overall 20 inch handle, uh, and it seems, seems plenty accurate. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the grind. Uh, here's, here's the grind. It's uh, beveled on this side and pretty darn flat 
on this side. And I, I fume with this, and I suspect, let me see. Uh, this is set up, I think, for a righty from my point of view, because I hew bevel in, uh, bevel against the tree. So I would probably put the handle in the other way. I'm left-handed. This is confusing. Don't let it confuse you. Just try it for yourself and see how it works. Uh, and a, a good deal of the questions that are coming to me have to do with a, uh, a section on my video from Tree to Beam where uh, the uh, restoration carpenter of Canterbury Shaker Village Museum, and this, as I say, is 40 years ago, uh, politely asks me why I am hewing the wrong way, why I'm hewing backwards with the bevel towards the wood. And I explain and uh, do an experiment and and you probably should go and review that. I mean, it's a 50-minute video, so it's a lot of work to look at it, but apparently you have looked at it already and, and have shown some interest in it. Uh, so review that, uh, and that will help you understand what I'm talking about here. Uh, this is the axe that I have done most of my hewing with throughout my life. Uh, I purchased it from Shirley Sanborn at Joe Cornett's flea market for 20 bucks the head. And uh, I made this handle. Uh, and this is a oiled white oak handle. And it was my favorite axe for forever. and remains so, except I really don't hew anymore. I'm getting old and I do my hewing with an adze now. It's, it uh, it's better for, works better for me. I'm looking at five pounds and a uh, handle length of uh, almost 20 inches, 19 and a half inches up to the head. You can see how I'm measuring it here. And uh, that is uh, uh, what I hewed with very, very comfortably for most of my life. You may notice a chip. Can you see that chip right here? I can come closer maybe and uh, possibly put my hand behind. Does that help? There's a nasty chip right here. And I wanted to tell you the story of that chip because it is a warner, W-A-R-N-E-R, -E for who would be warned. I used the terminology of the Arabian Nights Burton translation, uh, which is, if you are hewing in public, don't let your ax out of sight. Because the minute you turn your back on it, some jerk is going to pick it up because it's attractive. And everybody who sees a broad axe wants to chop with it. And it doesn't take me. that I, I came back from a, a bathroom break or something and found that chip there. And whoever did it, of course, uh, immediately ab absented himself. But this is... Uh, you know, bring, bring your axe to the bathroom with you or put it in the hands of a, of a trusted friend. Don't leave it around. Um, so that's about all I have to say about that. And uh, let me see. How did I? This is odd. It seems to me, seems to me the flat side. How do I hew? I've forgotten how I hew now, but that's my axe. And somehow, well, you'll see it in the video. Let's see, this is the axe I'm using in the video. I, don't understand it anymore myself, and my recommendation is, of course, that you experiment. Here's an axe, which I have uh, dedicated a lot of time to. This is one of these machined axes, absolutely flat, absolutely flat on the, on the flat side, just like the head of an engine. Uh, and it's cast steel. It's not an iron axe, and uh, it... Uh, is beveled on one side only, and I dutifully hewed a number of logs with this, probably three or four, and uh, learned to hate it. Uh, it's also massively heavy. Uh, it weighs, looks like, nine pounds, and uh, that's too much from my point of view. The handle, which I made the handle, uh, and coming out of the head, as you see, 24 inches long, which I think is plenty long, if not too long. 
And a couple of things about the handle. Uh, this is a wire wrap. Uh, I had just learned from Norris Patch, who taught me most of what Norris Patch taught me. He taught me over a cup of coffee. He taught me by talking to me. And he, taught, he told me about wire wrapping. Uh, annealed iron wire, known as soft wire, uh, sometimes known as baling wire, except this is a finer, thinner than uh, a, diff a, a smaller gauge than baling wire. Uh, I bought this when I was 15 years old from an army surplus store that I used to frequent. Uh, nice roll of it, I could, I could show it to you. Uh, it's, it's army surplus, World War II army surplus, they used a lot of it. Uh, if you take a piece of annealed soft iron wire, which you can tell because you bend it, it stays bent, uh, tempered wire springs back, it's kind of springy, and you tie it to a tree, and you attach the other end to your axe handle, and you get back uh, 30 or 40 feet, uh, you can actually feel that wire stretching like it was, again, rubber, like it was a rubber band, only it's, uh, it's, a, it's flex it has a, it has a stretch. Not very much, just a little bit. And if you stretch it too much, even one time, the wire will become hardened and will lose that elastic quality. So you have to be very, very careful. But if you take an, a, a cracked axe handle, this isn't, I just did it for experiment. If you, did, if you take an axe handle that needs it, all, all axe handles crack essentially along here. This is the place. And uh, this is the difference between the American axe handle. And now I'm talking about axe handles, which I'm not prepared to do because I have axe handle show and tell someplace else. But, uh, and, and the American uh, axe, axe user basically doesn't care. Axe handles crack here, and so what? Sometimes we wire them. If you uh, turn that wire and you, and, you, and you wrap the handle with a lot, of, a lot of tension on it, but not too much, you can wrap a handle and, and produce a, a, uh, uh, a, a, a pressure, a serious pressure on the wood from the uh, elasticity of the annealed iron wire that is just like wrapping it with a super duper rubber band. It takes a lot of skill and uh, uh, some experience, but uh, it's, a, it's a, a, a good thing for a hobbyist to play with. It's, it, uh, it's a real accomplishment there. I don't know if I accomplished it or not. And you can tie, you, you usually it's tied off to nails or screws at the end. You, you can't pull it under. If you look at my wrapping, uh, I have a YouTube presentation called Wrapping a Spoon or something, the dish line or something like that. You can see how I do it, but, but you can't pull metal through. You have to tie it at the ends. So here is an ax I don't recommend. I, I, and I know, I know what I'm talking about because I, I know it well. It's also terribly, it's quite sharp, and brutally dangerous to handle. Ah, okie dokie, let's move on. I hope I don't. Here's one. Uh, this. This is one inch rubber hose. Very interesting stuff. Uh, my hose, of course, all comes from the dump. It's used garden hose people have thrown away. And this is one inch garden hose and it's a uh, rubber hose and it's uh, very high quality stuff. People, there are people who know hose. Uh, if I told you about all I know, but I, I've known people who've known hose. So this one is uh, six and a half pounds, which I think is about right. And the handle is obviously handmade, but not by me. And it's uh, much longer than it needs to be. Uh, 25 inches out of the, out of the head. And uh, my guess is this was either stuck in there by, uh, looks like I did it and broke it. So I, I certainly hewed with this. It, uh, so I, I was about to say, yeah, it looks like it, yeah, from the end here, it looks like it was stuck in by a, uh, that looks like my work, hard to tell. Uh, stuck in by an antique dealer. Always watch out for that for your flea market axes. You, 
the handle may not be put in there by an expert. Uh, people think they can get more money for an axe if they uh, if they stick a handle in it. But that looks like my anyway. That's the mystery. Notice this axe has been dug. See the massive pitting on it. This axe. Is, is, look at the pitting. This pitting back here was not made by uh, by wear or use. It was made by sitting underground for many many years. And this is a good example of a very important, a uh, very important point. How do I say it? Uh, we have all been told that if a fine woodworking tool, if a woodworking tool uh, has been pitted with rust, it is no good. And that is what we all believe in a way, without thinking about it, without experimenting, without trying. And it is not true. In fact, the opposite is true. An ax pitted with rust as brutally as this one is, this of, this, of course, is, is ground uh, pretty evenly both sides, uh, which is an advantage. Uh, and I ground this, and it took me a season, is uh, going to wind up being finer than it ever was. And in my opinion, I have never seen a hewing axe, a broad axe, ground as finely as it ought to be. I, and that includes mine. Is uh, We don't want to make it weak. We don't want to waste the metal. We don't, it's a lot of labor to grind uh, finely. And uh, we all should grind more finely. And there's nothing like serious pitting to, uh, to cause that to happen. So value your old pitted axes. Here's one I have a long history with, and not a pleasant one. This is a carpenter's axe, uh, which I assume is uh, used in house building, or was used in house building generally, in joinery. Uh, a lot, used a lot like an adze to, to trim floor joists where they're up against, uh, up against the the uh, timbers and, and you can't trim them. You can't trim them with a plane. Uh, of course, there's a bone nose plane, I suppose. But uh, I made that handle, and uh, I think it's, it's a hardwood. Certainly, I don't remember what I made it out of. It's certainly hardwood, uh, and uh, rather a lovely handle. And I had trouble with the wedge, so I I put a twisted a wire around to hold the wedge in. I mean, things with weather, things do loosen up, but you can clip a wire off and drive the wedge in or change the wedge and, and uh, wire it again. So that's, that's one way to, I mean, keeping, keeping the handle in your head, uh, any of you who've, who've had experience with axes know is, uh, is part of the, one of the most difficult things going. So this is a light axe, the weight of it is, is a three pound axe. Uh, chopping axe weight, and this handle is chopping, chopping axe handle length of uh, 20, 26 and a half inches coming out of the head. And I ground this very carefully, it took a long time, absolutely straight. This, this edge is absolutely straight. And uh, what I thought it would be useful for is I thought if I could you know, learn to uh, stand on the log and lean over and, and score the log uh, vertically, then my scores would be absolutely uh, straight in the log and it would make my hewing better. Uh, but what it boiled down to was the shock that came up through this handle when the entire bit uh, contacted the wood at the same time, especially once I got in a ways was just so hard on my elbows that I basically couldn't use it. And I wasn't willing to uh, regrind it with a curve because I have plenty of axes that are ground with a curve and I put so much labor into it. So here it is, uh, a, uh, a uh, turkey, 
what do you call something like that? It didn't work. Something that didn't work. So these three have been shown, and uh, this one's been shown. Here is a beauty. Check this one out. Oh, I've already shown you this one. This is the one with the handle went in both sides. This is, of course, a bent handle. Uh, the handle <clears throat> on your broad axe is, in my opinion, irrelevant. What? Ah. And uh, don't worry about the handle. We'll talk about this more. Here's an interesting one. I've heard these called railroad axes. Again, uh, sort of a combination. Um, uh, interesting. If somebody has... Uh, well, the reason we call it a railroad axe is because the boys uh, were, were hired to uh, walk along back in the old days, walk around the railroad right of way, chop down trees, fell trees, chop them to uh, five feet or the length of a tie, which I think is about that, and then hew out the ties. And so they would make the ties along the railroad as they went, and you were paid by the number of ties you made, and you could make a dollar a day if you worked at it, and that was enough. Uh, and I think this was probably made actually to drive, to drive uh, spikes with, but I'm not sure. It doesn't look like it was used for that, which is good. And somebody has, somebody has uh, made it into a very slight, looked like it must, must have wanted to be a single bevel and somebody ground it into a double bevel. And, and I ground it the way it's ground, it's terribly sharp. There's the weld, it's a welded axe. And it's a nice axe. I have hewed with this one quite happily. And it weighs uh, four and a half pounds roughly. And the handle, again, it's a chopping length handle, which is a, you know, 20, uh, 20, 22 and a half inches. And it's really rather nice. Uh, obviously, I cracked the handle and, and uh, tied it up with, uh, I get, w one gets different favorite materials. <laughs> and this is, uh, this is uh, artificial sinew from uh, the Tandy company that makes all those tools for leather workers. And, and uh, it's nylon or something, and uh, interesting stuff. I don't use it anymore for some reason. I don't have any complaints about it, but I just uh, don't use it anymore. I'm getting confused. What is the... I bet this goes here, just guessing. I'm getting myself into trouble with this. This Oh, yeah, this goes here. Okay, I think we've done uh, all the axes that are... We haven't done... I think we just... Did we do that? I guess not. Okay. Oh, it's beautiful. Superbly fine axe, uh, pretty much flat on this side and a little and beveled on this side, but just a little off. And here is that that flaw that you find on so many of them, where the where the butterfly has been folded and welded to the iron. Oh, this is gorgeous! Look at this edge, oh, man. And and I I I ground that. Uh, it's massively, again, this one was, was probably dug. It's, I ground it, with ma it's massively pitted, and I ground it just far enough to get all the pits out of it. Uh, I was getting tired, obviously. It probably took me about 40 hours to grind this darn thing. Uh, that's uh, probably dried blood or something, rust. Uh, and it's, it's a beauty. Look how, how fine and thin it is. Nobody's broad axes are fine enough or thin enough. And that's uh, that's my message to you, if I have any message at all. It weighs about six pounds. It's a, that's pretty light for, a, for an axe this wide. Uh, wow, this one just stops the heart, I'll tell you. We, we do love these things, don't we? Uh, 22 and a half inches, uh, white oak, uh, handmade, handmade white oak handle. Not by me. While I'm at it, uh, let's talk about, well, we're talking about axe handles again. This, you see the bump on the end of this axe handle? This is uh, Norris Patch, taught me this. This is known as, fret, I made this handle. It's known as fret style. And this bump is to drive on to uh, set the handle in. When you, when you hang an axe, <clears throat> you literally hang the axe 
like a, like a pendulum of a clock and you swat it uh, at the end of the handle quite sharply, Norris said, with a steel hammer. Uh, I actually use a, uh, a soft hammer. Uh, soft hammers have always been expensive in the old days and Norris didn't have a good one, I think, but I have some very good ones, so I don't use steel anymore, but that's to protect the grain here. And now we're out of time. Uh, our technology limits us to half an hour, so I will hold up my, uh, my to be continued sign. You, you just, this is the end of episode one of uh, Answers to, <clears throat> of uh, From Creed to Beam plus 40 Years, and I'll be back shortly uh, with episode two. Thank you for watching. Uh, this is my website. If, uh, if you uh, want to buy a wooden spoon, which is my business, and my name is here, and that's how you spell it, to find me on YouTube if you happen to, happen to need to. And before I leave, I want to tell you I'm looking for some outfit to take my axe collection on consignment and get them into the hands of uh, people who will use them so they don't wind up back in the flea market after I die. And uh, I'll say more about that uh, <clears throat> next time. Thank you for watching.